So what exactly are adaptogens, right? That's what we really want to explore today with Dr. Swati, who is an award-winning pharmacist from South Carolina. And right now she's a co-founder of a couple of things that's going on with supplements and educational uh, programs in, in cannabis. Welcome, Dr. Swati. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So let's just talk about you know, adaptogens. People are talking about adaptogens. Oh, if you have this, it's like a superfood. If you have it, you're never going to eat. You're going to look <laughs> you, you, you are just going to live forever and ever. What exactly is the mystery behind adaptogens? Yeah, so the term adaptogen is actually pretty new. It was founded by a Russian toxicologist only in the 1950s. Um, and so he defined it as substances that increase the state of nonspecific resistance. And so that kind of sounds like a bit of jargon. So really what that means is that um, when we're talking about the stress response in general, so the stress response is the way that our body deals with stress. So there's kind of three phases of that. There's the alarm phase, the resistance phase, and the exhaustion phase. And so with the alarm phase, that's when the stressor occurs. And so I like to use the example of, you know, you're starting to feel tired. Mm -hmm. And then the, the phase of resistance is going through that tired, but not getting to the point of the phase of exhaustion, which is like burnout and breaking down and just like the opposite of anything we could want. Um, and so I really feel like adaptogens are amazing. And as I mentioned, they're the they try to prolong that state of resistance. So that middle state before we hopefully ever have to deal with anything such as exhaustion. So overall, that's how it was defined. And I think that the definition is kind of evolved over time. And so adaptogens really are any sort of natural substance that falls into this category. And they really help the body facilitate its capacity to adapt to any sort of stressors. So that could be internal stressors like emotional turmoil, that could be external stressors, um, as well like pollution, as well as food intake too, because sometimes we can have those inflammatory responses to, to food that doesn't respond well with us. So any sort of natural substances that fall into that category. So they could be herbs, they could be fungi like medicinal mushrooms, um, other plants as well. And so some of the most common ones I think now are ashwagandha that people are talking about. Um, and then rhodiola, medicinal mushrooms, as I mentioned. So like reishi and cordyceps and, um, and chaga. And then there's also other ones like astragalus. Um, turmeric has also been big recently. Uh, so there really are just so many. And I think that people are getting more interested into the natural space and trying to see, you know, how can I optimize my health and wellness. And so adaptogens really help the body maintain their overall like homeostasis is the technical term, but really it just means balance of the body and all of the systems. And that's really what we're looking for overall is to have the most balance and have like the best possible life that we can. So I think that adaptogens can really help be a part of that. And if there's ways that we can integrate into our life, and I just think that there are so many different ways now. So, okay, so that's that's really good. So what is the chemical, since you're a pharmacist, I have to ask you this question. What is the chemical compound that's common, right? I mean, we, you talked about mushroom, you talked about turmeric, you talked about ashwagandha, right? Yeah. And, and and so what is the common thread that, that, that pours all of these, uh, you know, all of these kind of uh, versus ashwagandha versus this, what is the common thing between ashwagandha and turmeric that, that causes an adaptogen is the question. Yeah, I mean, I wish there was one you know, specific compound or something that simple. Yeah. But I think the main thing when I'm thinking about adaptogens and the way that they work in the body on like that cellular level, mm -hmm. I think that it comes down to inflammatory markers. And so there are quite a few inflammatory markers. Mm -hmm. um, for example, like for talking about supporting brain health with like a lens main or bacopa, for example, mm -hmm. those in particular, they work on BDNF. And so that's brain neurotropic, brain neurotropic factor. Um, and so that factor in general, um, as we age, it actually, the amount of that factor goes down just mm -hmm. naturally. And so um, by incorporating various products, whether they are adaptogens 
There's also other foods that um, are able to do that too, like blueberries is a superfood for a reason. So that also has some sort of impact on this brain-derived neurotropic factor. And it really is amazing for helping just like support overall brain activity. There's also been um, a really interesting discussion about the utilization of that for myelin. And so myelin is what kind of coats the neurons in the brain. And so it helps the signaling function the way it's supposed to. And just over time, that functioning is not as, you know, um, vibrant or as vigorous as it, has, as it has been years before. And so BDNF also plays a role in that. So that's just one of the examples. But I think that it comes down to trying to decrease the inflammation in the body. And I think overall inflammation gets a very bad rep because people are saying, oh, I don't want any inflammation. There has to be some inflammation because that's your body's natural reaction. Mm -hmm. But I think that the issue rises when there's too much inflammation. And then that just causes so many processes to go out of whack. And so really adaptogens are there to help our body build resilience against this just overwhelming or potentially overwhelming inflammation. Sure. So, so it's, it, you can say that they are, all the adaptogens have anti-inflammatory Absolutely, yes. in them mm -hmm. so that they help with the body with the inflammation, right? Just yeah. keep it a very simple layman yeah. language so we can understand that. Okay. So, so, all right. So uh, then let's just talk about, you know, uh, there are so many adaptogens, right? So, so there's an example, you talk about blueberries, ashwagandha, reishi, mm -hmm. mushroom, yeah. turmeric. What are the other few? Let's just name a few of them. Yeah, so I mentioned bacopa. And so blueberries, I wouldn't necessarily say is an adaptogen, but I think it is a superfood. And some of the superfoods can function in that same way, but they're superfoods for other reasons. And a lot of the superfoods, I'm getting off topic here, but all of the superfoods um, are um, attributed to some like polyphenolic compounds as we talked about. We can talk about that another time. Um, so with adaptogens, though, there are so many other ones. So I mentioned lion's mane, bacopa. Um, there's also just such a such an extensive list. So I mentioned astragalus. Um, and then there is holy basil is another great one. And it's actually really interesting. There's ginseng and ginkgo. Um, ginseng in terms of like Siberian ginseng and then also Asian ginseng, American ginseng. Um, a lot, right? There's a lot. Yeah. There's so many. And I think one of the most fascinating things for me as someone who you know, is very interested in the herbal side, so many of these herbs that are being thought of and discussed now as adaptogens mm -hmm. are actually herbs that have been used for thousands of years in traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda. Yeah. And, and that's what is so fascinating that we are putting a lot of science and research now, which is amazing. Yeah right for mm -hmm. for for ayurvedic herbs or for even chinese medicine herbs so on a, on a daily basis like normal people like us what should we do from a dosage point of view i mean should we start pounding in all the adaptogens like a crazy person here or should we just um yeah them? that's that's a great question so i think that when we're thinking about incorporating adaptogens it's definitely very personalized and so i feel like with you know certain herbs for example like you can take a lot more than maybe your mom or your brother or your sister or your friend it just like depends on the person and so i always started a lower dose of course that depends per adaptogen so um when we start to talk about that a bit more and like coming talks as well as um in the course and everything there'll be a bit more information on dosage but um i always think about adaptogens in terms of like their long-term use and so i think about it like an exercise routine so in the beginning you're not just going to walk into the gym and start you know bench pressing 200 pounds or something mm -hmm. um, and so you work up to that um, and so i think that also with exercise there is that like long-term benefit mm -hmm. and you don't see the effects initially and so with a lot of adaptogens i say anywhere from two to two to six weeks even six to eight weeks um that there is that that need for consistency with taking them and i would recommend adding one at a time just to see if your body reacts and if you like that reaction and if you really do feel like you know your concentration has improved with adding a lion's mane for example Sure, sure. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Swati. I mean, this is just a short, short little yeah. 
intro, a teaser intro to adaptogens, and we are coming up with a more uh, program with Dr. Yes. Swan is actually putting together right now, and and we will be launching the program pretty soon. But but if in the meantime, if someone has any questions on adaptogens and how you what, how you should uh, you know kind of incorporate in your diet on a daily basis, uh, feel free to put it in the comment. Anything yes, else? definitely. Right, Dr. Swati, before we wrap up today, anything else? Yes, from you, from your side. Um, no, nothing else. I'm just very excited for people to learn more about adaptogens and figure out which ones are the right fit for them and then how they can integrate that into their life because there's so many ways now, so many products that mm -hmm. are now on the market that either have adaptogens in them or there are some that are just powders that you can mix into a smoothie. So there are just so many options now. Mm -hmm. So I think it's not as daunting as thinking that I have to like make some sort of elaborate concoction or like a, an herbal tea on the stove or something. There are a lot of simpler ways to do it. Yeah. And I think I like to add is understand your body, right? I mm -hmm. mean, that's very important. What might work for Swati might not work for me and vice versa. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's important for all of you, for all of us really to understand what our body is and, and nourish our body accordingly, what our body needs. Right. And that is a process too. So it's not something that we need to know immediately or that we even should know immediately. It's just something that you learn with trial and error and figuring out what makes you feel the best. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Swati, for, for a teaser uh, <laughs> session on adaptogens. Like I said earlier, we are coming up with a program and we will be telling all of you um, with Dr. Swati launching the program and letting you know. With that, thank you so much. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.